Alopecia. Introduction. Hair loss is common in both men and women. You or someone you love may be experiencing hair loss. Most people lose up to 100 hairs from their scalp every day. That's normal, and those hairs usually grow back. But many people lose more hair as they grow older. Alopecia causes you to lose hair from a part of the body that normally has hair. This program will help you understand alopecia, the different types of hair loss, and their treatment options. Anatomy. Hair is made of a chemical called keratin. Keratin is the same material that makes up fingernails and toenails. A specialized structure inside the skin called the papilla produces hair. A sac-like structure called the follicle surrounds the papilla and the rest of the hair root that is under the skin. The shaft of the hair is on the outside of the body, sticking out of the skin. The shaft has three layers: one, the cuticle or the outer layer; two, the cortex or the middle layer; three, the medulla or the center of the hair. Hair color depends on different pigments in the cortex. As we grow older, pigment gradually stops being produced, resulting in gray or white hair. We each have about 120,000 hairs on our scalp. Blond-haired people seem to have more hairs than brown-haired and red-headed people. Our entire body is covered with hair, except for our lips, the palms of our hands, and the soles of our feet. Hair that is very thin and hard to see is called vellus. An average person has about five million hairs on his or her body. Hair grows from the papilla in different phases, depending on where it is on the body, the person's age, and medical condition. A strand of hair might grow for up to five years. After growing for up to five years, the hair quits growing and goes into a resting phase for up to twelve weeks. After the resting phase, the hair falls out of the follicle and a new hair starts to grow. The cycle then repeats. Up to 100 scalp hairs per day may fall out. Normal hair growth depends on good blood supply to the papilla and a healthy body. Types and causes. There are many different types of hair loss or alopecia. The most common is baldness, which affects over 95% of people with hair loss. Baldness is not actually hair loss. Hair is not lost, but instead it becomes very fine and colorless, reverting to vellus. Common baldness is hereditary. It is also due to hormonal changes in the body, mainly higher levels of male hormones called androgens. Women also have androgens. Both men and women can get this type of baldness. Hair loss can happen because of medications such as chemotherapy and medications taken for gout, arthritis, depression, hypertension, and heart problems. Vitamin A in large doses can also lead to hair loss. Stopping the medication that is causing hair loss usually allows the hair to grow back, but this should be done under a healthcare provider's supervision. Birth control pills and pregnancy can lead to hair loss. This may last for up to six months after stopping birth control pills or after delivering the baby. Hair tends to grow back with no long-term problems. Other conditions that could lead to temporary hair loss include thyroid problems, low protein diet, low levels of iron in the blood, common in women with heavy menstrual cycles. Other conditions that could lead to hair loss include diabetes, lupus. Major surgery, chronic illness, a fungal infection of the scalp. Hair loss can also happen because of hair pulling. Hair may be pulled purposely due to nervousness or accidentally, such as with tightly braided hair. If the pulling stops, the hair will grow back. Chemical and heat treatments, such as hair coloring and perming, can weaken the hair and lead to hair loss. Using shampoo more than once per day or brushing your hair with too much force can also lead to hair loss.
The immune system can also cause hair loss. The immune system helps defend the body from viruses, bacteria, and foreign substances. Sometimes the immune system mistakes hair follicles for a foreign substance and attacks them. If the immune system attacks hair follicles, patchy hair loss on the scalp, face, or other areas of the body may result. The patches are usually larger than the size of a quarter. This condition is called alopecia areata. In severe cases, hair all over the body is lost when the immune system attacks hair follicles. This is called alopecia universalis. 2% of the population will develop alopecia areata at some point in their lives. This type of alopecia sometimes runs in families. Hair may grow back on its own with no medical intervention. Treatment Treatments for common baldness are usually not effective. A special lotion called minoxidil applied twice a day can improve blood supply to the follicles and papillae. This can treat baldness slightly. A pill called finasteride, Propecia, is also used to treat common baldness. Taken once a day, it blocks the effect of androgens on the hair follicles. This drug can lead to birth defects in pregnant women, so women should not use it. It sometimes takes months before lotions or pills produce any benefits. Most specialists suggest baby shampoo for patients losing hair. Blow drying is discouraged. Patients with hair loss should wait to comb their hair until after it dries. Wet hair is more fragile than dry hair. Treatment for alopecia areata includes the use of steroids, either by mouth, by injection, or as a topical ointment on the affected areas. Minoxidil lotions such as Rogaine or a tar-like substance called anthralin cream may also help treat alopecia areata. In patients with more severe cases of alopecia areata or alopecia universalis, steroid pills may be prescribed. Other treatment options are available for severe cases of alopecia areata or universalis. These include Treatment with medications that suppress the immune system, such as cyclosporine. Treating the skin with ultraviolet light after the patient takes oral medication. Sometimes topical medications that cause an allergic reaction in the skin may be applied. These medications can jumpstart hair growth. Other medications are being studied to see if they can treat hair loss. More research is needed to determine whether they are effective. Laser therapy uses a low-level laser on men and women with hereditary hair loss. Treating alopecia depends on the underlying reason for the hair loss. For example, adding iron or protein to your diet could lead to hair regrowth. In cases where no medical treatments help, wigs and hair transplants may be considered. Patients should protect exposed areas from sunburn by covering them or by using sunscreen. In cases where the eyelashes and eyebrows are absent, eyeglasses can help protect the eyes from dust and debris. Summary Alopecia causes you to lose hair from a part of the body that normally has hair. There are many different types of hair loss or alopecia. The most common is baldness, which affects over 95% of people with hair loss. Treating common baldness is not very effective. A lotion called minoxidil, applied twice a day, improves blood supply to the follicles and papillae. This can treat baldness slightly. You can lose your hair if you have certain diseases, such as thyroid problems, diabetes, or lupus. If you take certain medicines or have chemotherapy for cancer, you may also lose your hair. Other causes are stress, a low-protein diet, family history, or poor nutrition. Treating hair loss depends on its cause. Certain lotions, pills, and baby shampoo may all help delay or treat hair loss. In patients with more severe cases of alopecia areata or alopecia universalis, steroid pills may be prescribed. Some hair loss patients may have to accept baldness or cover it up with wigs or hair transplants. 
Talk to your health care provider to discuss treatment options that may work the best for you. This video is intended to provide introductory information on this topic to general public health and awareness. You should understand that this health education video includes general information and not specific medical advice. It shows graphics and series of pictures and dialogues that have been simplified for better understanding. If you have any questions, you will check with your doctor or health care provider. It is not intended as a substitute for professional medical advice. Always rely only on your doctors in matters related to your health.